Hello there once again. I just wanted to do one more update um, on my gasifier here. Um, I'm having incredible success with it. A um, few lessons learned though I'm, I'd like to pass on. I, uh, I'm from the northern climate and sub-zero temperatures most definitely have an effect on gas production. I think they help the production. However, you do have to monitor um, things from freezing up because as soon as they freeze up of course your production uh, can come to a grinding halt or get severely uh, uh, severely uh, imposed on um, but I did make a few changes here to my uh, to my design not nothing serious um, I had put wood chips in here and uh, like wood pellets in my primary filter that was a bad idea um, all they did was take the moisture and swell and it almost plugged it off completely. So um, there's so much moisture in this particular filter coming off of my uh, cyclone filter that I decided to put another jar on. Um, and now instead of um, instead of putting in the valve and those uh, lovely uh, whatever you call them there, those anchors I guess you could call them, uh, they're more like a flange. Um, I just self-tap screwed a, a lid and drilled a hole through it with some silicone and wow does that ever pick up a lot of moisture. Um, and I did the same on filter number two here. The one on filter number two is proving that number one works exceptional simply because uh, I hardly get any moisture in number two but I do get a lot in number one. So that just keeps the next filter from, from getting all wet and then freezing in my case. Um, the other thing is I would have expected that filter number four it is now at the bottom of my PVC would have had a lot less moisture in it. However, it doesn't. So this particular filter even with extracting the moisture out of here did not change the performance of this filter and I think the reason why is these filters still extracted the moisture but the filter stayed in the filter or the moisture stayed in the filter um, and then of course with uh, minus 30 degree uh, wind chills that moisture would freeze and then it would um, of course it would start to plug off the filter so with having that jar here it's just an, an incredible difference um, and this filter here still performs the same way it did therefore this black pipe is extracting a lot of moisture. Um, maybe I stumbled on that. I, I would say uh, the results of it are are very positive, and uh, I'm I'm really glad I was thinking like that that day and put that on there. So I'm going to show you here. We now have five sediment bowls, if you will, and honestly, it could use a sixth. The sixth one would go under the reactor because I'm extracting an awful lot of moisture from the reactor. What's happening is the moisture stays in the reactor though and I think it gets once it gets warm enough it starts to re-evaporate and it eventually gets transferred over to my cyclone filter and then of course up to filter number one and so on. So if I were to change anything else that would be it. I would put a valve on the bottom there into a jar. Um, other than that, the performance of this thing is, in my opinion, exceptional. The fuel quality is exceptional. Um, still concerned, I guess, with the fact that the gas I'm using coming out of this board here does not actually get hit by the blower, which actually extracts more of that flammable tar slash creosote mixture. Um, so, Anyways, I wanted to show you those filters that I put on, and I've also changed the median here to rocks. This is just P rock. I don't really think it would matter uh, what type of rock you used. It it's giving more surface area for the the impurities to attach to, and then the moisture from them drips down into the jar. It takes a long time to warm this rock up and I think that is a good thing um, because that means the rock is absorbing the heat out of here 
the the temperature I get here after about an hour or so worth of run time it was at 45 and I think it's actually lower than that now so the rock is a thumbs up for a primary filter and like I say I don't know if I'll ever be able to clean that uh, the only way I could think of is to burn it and then maybe let it dry or rattle it or something and then maybe reprocess it that way and then in here I'm back again to sawdust which um, you can see it's doing it's doing its job there's about an hour and a half of runtime on this stuff here um, and that's just sawdust with screens on each end uh, I did take the time to cut up some wood blocks in case I wasn't happy with my sawdust I could run her through this media here to extract even more or it, it'd probably be less than the sawdust but it's going to last a lot longer and give it something else to stick to and then it go through the next uh, cooling and, and uh, remove some more water from it and then it would go into that big filter which is like I say the heart of the system in my opinion um, I want to show you some of the fluids that have come off of here here's our sediment jars here the first one here this is on uh, uh, hour or better of runtime. Look how much extraction I have there. This jar is almost half full. Well, yeah, we'd say it's about here. Jar number two. This is the one on the primary filter, that green one there that's facing us. Um, jar number two. Look how much extra that took out after the cyclone filter. Jar number three. Hardly a few drips. However, that only means to me that's still a good investment because that means to me that this filter is doing its job, which is making the life of this filter even better. Now I thought with these two jars in ahead of this jar, it would prevent this jar from doing anything, but as you can see, we've cooled the gas even more and taken even more moisture out of it. Uh, jar number five here. This is the flammable liquid. Out in the cold, this stuff is like molasses. It hardly runs at all. When you bring it into the shop and warm it up, it kind of settles out. You can see that stuff on the bottom there would be what's flammable. I don't think the stuff on the top is. Um, however, I burnt one of these here. I weighed it on my kitchen scale. It's three pounds worth of pellets. I burnt two of these yesterday and that is the sample. This is all extracted off of six pounds of wood pellets which are being burnt in about minus 20 degree weather. So the reason I say that is I, I think there would be more extraction in a colder ambient temperature like that um, which would produce a better gas quality but we are extracting, like if I were to pour all these jars into here, we would probably be up to, you know, two thirds of this jar, which that jar is probably, I don't even know what that jar would be. Two liters, I don't know if it would even be that much. One liter. Anyway, um, getting a significant amount of extraction out of there and a nice, nice crisp flame. Engine has no issues running on it. In fact, uh, I was expecting a campfire smell from the engine and don't get me wrong I get that but it's not very potent it's quite mild if you will so I just kinda wanted to uh, to uh, get my last few changes up on there on, on sorry on YouTube and uh, I'm gonna kinda park this thing for now until I can get my tractor dug out and then it's just going to be a matter of starting the tractor on this and once the tractor starts and operates properly on this we'll build a carb for it then I will mount this to the tractor and probably have a video or two with the uh, performance and the mounting procedure but other than that uh, I'm probably going to put the brakes on this here for a, for a short term and uh, we're going to move on to our next project which is actually, uh, it was supposed to be a solar distiller but actually what we're going to do is we're going to bump this next project ahead we're going to build a 45 gallon drum 
heat exchanging wood stove that's going to sit outside of my greenhouse and blow nice fresh warm air into the greenhouse thermostatically controlled we'll build this thing so it's on wheels so it's portable and when the greenhouse is uh, into the clear for temperatures we're gonna wheel out this oil burner that I have this drip oil burner that actually works great um, but I have consumed all of my used oil and all of my neighbors used oil uh, it does a great job heating the shop however it does not comply with my insurance so unfortunately I'm gonna have to take a a good project like that and we're just gonna have to uh, put her outside to rust for now until we can come up with a better way of doing it uh, that insurance is gonna agree with and uh, not saying they're gonna agree with a wood barrel stove however this one would be more portable and it could be set up to a a chimney system where um, where it could be uh, a little less unattended if you will uh, that one there oil heat you do have to babysit you can't go too far away uh, it can take off on you if you're not careful so anyway that's my update for now hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you have any questions or whatever uh, fire away and like I say uh, if I can I will respond and if not I really appreciate the interest thanks mm -hmm.